think they're just incredibly beautiful and there's something that is unique. They're so graceful and that you know they're so beautiful that they're, they're easy to embrace and really appreciate for their beauty aren't they? Yeah you know, they're really an icon I think for this area that's that's the most important thing for me. If you see masses of kofi blooming you know it's, it's springtime. It's really bright and vibrant and that's really cool because most trees are just green. <laughs> It's just a wee baby one, but it's beautiful when it flowers in the summer. Did you know that Otago used to be covered in kōwhai once? Their bright yellow blossoms provide food for birds like tuis and bellbirds. Their leaves give shade to other native plants, and people really like them too. It's very much a New Zealand tree for me. It's when I see a kōwhai, I know I'm in New Zealand. It feels like New Zealand. It's it's not found anywhere else. Uh, it's so, so distinctive. Uh, I love the link it has with, with birds uh, and the seasonality link it has as well. Whenever you see masses of kofi blooming, you know it's, it's springtime. It's just, just a lovely reminder about, about what's so great about living in New Zealand. Kofi used to flourish around Otago, but now there are only a few lonely trees left. But community groups around Otago are about to change that by being part of Project Gold, which encourages people to grow kōwhai all around Otago. I guess Project Gold came out of the concerns we had about the continuing loss of um, woody vegetation, particularly in central Otago. And it became really apparent when we, I guess, rather belatedly realised that kōwhai was perhaps the last tree species that's still quite widespread through Otago and is indicative really of forest or the tree land that we might have had in the past. So although Project Gold is a Department of Conservation initiated project, it's really only going to get wings if the community uh, get in behind it. Project Gold is, is something incredibly worthwhile to reintroduce the kōwhai species into the district here and beyond. It's an enhancement of the Central Otago Rail Trail and it's an awareness of this very special tree. Well I'd like to see uh, kofi and indeed other companion species along parts of the trail around the reserve, particularly around the, uh, around the old station uh, areas. It's restoration of um, some of our native environments, particularly our dryland environment here. Um, conservation tied up with that I guess just trying to, to bring those environments back to partially what they were before. We'll never return them to exactly how they were, but we can get part of the way there using the likes of Kofi, that'd be great. Because Kofi are native to Otago, they're actually really suited to growing here. In fact, they do better than a lot of exotic trees. I've been planting for about five or six years now, and my older trees are probably seven or eight years old and they have absolutely snubbed their noses at the wind, the drought, the alkaline soil, um, a lack of watering by me and they're still managing to flower within seven years of planting. So to me, to survive on my windswept site at the head of Lake Dunstan, they're just fabulous. Um, not, no trees that you go and buy locally, um, ornamentals, would, would grow there. Um, so one of the options that people will have is to grow their own kofi. And to make that a little bit easier for them, we've developed a, um, a wee pack here, which is just a, a six-cell punnet, um, which we can provide to people with a, a little packet of um, six seeds that have been eco-sourced for their area where they're going to plant them back into. And we'll have an instruction leaflet um, explaining how to prepare your seed, because it's got to be prepared in a certain way to, to, uh, to get the germination process going. Um, and so those three items will come together in a pack and you'll be able to call into your dog office and uh, pick up a pack and um, get your own uh, half a dozen kofi plants underway. Only one tree species of kofi is native to Otago, so it's best to grow trees that have been eco-sourced. Yeah, eco-sourcing is really about using plants that are, are local to the area that you're wanting to plant into. 
and there's a lot of good reasons for that. Uh, one is we see a lot of variation within uh, the form of ko-fi and, it, and it's nice to have plantings that re reflect the, you know, the local form of ko-fi that you're growing because it will be different from region to region. But the most compelling reason is simply that the plants that, are, that already grow here are really the best adapted to growing here and are really going to give the best chances of survival. So who knows what the seeds look like? You do. What colour are they? They're yellow. They're yellow. They're tiny little yellow ones. You've found one already. So do you know what's inside these seeds? I'm really um, hot on our students sourcing their seeds locally. We go out and walk the hills and collect kawaii seeds from all around the district. I don't want them collecting seeds from town. It's really important to me that we get truly eco-sourced kawaii seeds to grow. They are going back into our local district when they're planted. So the next thing we're going to do, now that you've got the seeds out of the pods, is we're going to have to try and break this strong coat around the seed, because the little kawaii that's living inside that seed, he's not going to be able to get out of there unless we make some holes in this coat. So we're going to have to get some sandpaper, and we're going to have to make a little hole on this side. A lot of people think there's a lot of magic associated with germinating kawaii's, but in actual fact all you've got to do is break the very hard seed coat that most legumes have. In the wild they normally are broken down by abrasion as they move in lakes in the water or just by microorganisms in the soil, however we want to speed things up so a piece of sandpaper is the key. It's very very easy, don't sandpaper too hard. The main thing is not to damage the embryo which is situated near the little brown line. Five or six strokes on some sandpaper and you'll have scarified the coat. You'll have broken through to let water and oxygen in. It's fun planting a tiny seed, knowing that one day it will provide food for tens, if not hundreds, of tuis and bellbirds. Everybody's got a certain fondness for kofi. I think it has a, a special place in their hearts. They've, um, they've all got special memories about, about kofi. Um, and always good memories and, and when you say hey let's let's do something for Ko-Fi, let's get a few more out there in the landscape, um, people are inevitably really enthusiastic about that idea. So how was that experience for you? Um, pretty cool because I've always wanted to plant my own Ko-Fi tree. What's up with your one? Well, I finished mine and I like it because it's been my first time planting. It's been my first ever time planting Ko-Fi. If you water the seeds and keep them snug and warm, they'll only take two weeks to germinate. In one or possibly two years, they can be planted out. That was your tree that you grew last year. Ah, oh, it's gone. Oh, oh, That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I think I'd really like to see people in central Otago especially plant more kawaii because they are such a local tree. They bring the bellbirds and a bellbird in your garden is, is near to heaven, in my opinion. So what does a kawaii tree need to grow big and strong? I'm digging out the weeds. I'll need worms. Water. It might need compost too and fertiliser. It would need sun. Sun. Who said sun? Me. So I think if you're planting a kai, you need a good sunny site. They do want full sun in most cases. A little bit of slope's nice if you can for the good drainage, but mostly we get that in central Otago. A decent hole, broader than you think it might be necessary. Dig it well. You can incorporate some compost or something that's well rotted if you want to, but I don't actually in my holes. Um, plant them well, firm them in with your fist rather than your foot, otherwise you might break some roots off. So you don't have to be a wonder or green fingered to actually get them to grow well because they are so robust and can handle the wind as well. We're sprinkling stones and straw around the kofi tree to stop the weeds getting into it. <laughs> this is a very rabbit prone area here so we have to protect from rabbits because one little nip and you can lose all your hard work and after a couple of years the trunk should be thick enough to take it off. I've been amazed about how much support we've had for, for Project Gold already and we've had uh, schools, we've had uh, Polytech uh, various nurseries have been really keen to come on board. It's the sort of project that might even appeal to, uh, to sponsors. Local communities, I think, will benefit from co-fi planting in, in, the, in the local area. Um, it gives a sense of, of being 
a caring. This just gives us one more thing to um, be proud of where we live. I would, I would like to see more kōwhai trees around because all we've got really is pine trees. <laughs>